Jeff, it's always great talking to you. When I'm talking to you, I know it's summer. I know it's great weather. And I, we got the Honda Indy Toronto happening here. How does it feel, man, being one of the organizers, one of the architects, to bring in such a great event to this city and, of course, to Canada? Well, it's it's an honor. And this event is a world-class event for this city with a huge economic impact. So, you know, very honored to have this position. But it's the team behind me that really pulls it off. Uh, you know, we're looking in a few weeks here getting the track built, and that will go right through to July. So very exciting times here in the Toronto, and we're very excited to welcome the uh, stars and cars of the uh, NTT IndyCar Series. Now, you know, we were just talking beforehand. Tickets are on sale as we speak right now. Yeah, tickets. Tickets are on sale, hondaindy.com, but they're as low as $40 uh, for the event days on Saturday and Sunday. Kids 12 and under free, but our biggest day is, is our Fan Friday in support of uh, Make-A-Wish that the Ontario Honda dealers uh, bring to us. Ontario Honda dealers Fan Friday is a free day uh, to attend, so people can come down on the Friday with a voluntary donation and get in to see the event uh, for a voluntary donation on the Friday. Now, as we're speaking, there's a gentleman here who's going to be in the race. He's doing some interviews right now. I'm going to be speaking to him a little bit later on. Who is that for fans to know? so they can get a quick, oh, i got to stick around and watch more of this interview because certain somebody's going to be coming up. Well, I think he's the best Canadian driver in the world, James Hinchcliffe. You know, James is a, obviously a tremendous competitor on our, our city streets here when he comes to Toronto. He's got the Indianapolis 500 uh, to prepare for and going into the, the weekend. So he's here today uh, to obviously look at that event, but he's thinking ahead to July where he's going to compete on the streets of Toronto. He's had two real incredible performances back-to-back -back, uh, with a third-place finish in 2017. 17 and a fourth place finish in 2018. So what? who knows what 2019 will bring. It's, we're long overdue for a Canadian driver to win, but I'm gonna put my money on someone. I'm gonna put my money on James Hinchcliffe. Absolutely, absolutely. This has really become a competitive race. Drivers, again, from around the world, they love this place. But the other thing too, it can be slick. The corners can be difficult sometimes. The excitement is huge. So Toronto's racetrack itself, I think, brings some of the best excitement for a street course out of any other uh, race on the circuit. You know, everyone looks forward to coming to the city of Toronto competing, but at the end of the day, anyone from first to last, depending on where you start from, where you qualify from, can win the race. That's what makes the race so exciting. There's no guaranteed winner when the green flag drops on the Sunday. Anyone can win. So, you know, for Toronto, we're going to be cheering on James Hinchcliffe, but we know on any given day, any one of the, uh, the NTT IndyCar Series drivers could win the race. Absolutely. And people should realize, too, it's not just about the race. There's a lot of other events that go on throughout that time. There is. So we are very much a festival. There's stuff to see uh, and do away from the racetrack. So whether it's the Honda World or Honda Speed Zone, there's a lot of things for families to see and do. We do have racing from each day, Friday through Sunday, 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. So if you want to see the racing all day, you can. But we really encourage our fans to check out Thunder Alley and the stuff to see and do away from the racetrack. Okay, and to get all the information and, of course, getting tickets early, and that's important early where do we go hondaindy.com tickets start as low as forty dollars my friend thank you so much looking forward to this absolutely James, it's always great speaking to you, but straight off the bat, what the hell happened a couple of days ago man I'm reading about this like an injured crash what happened man we hit the wall that's uh, uh hell yeah <laughs> You know, it was, it was honestly, it was really, it was a really crazy weekend, you know, with qualifying for the 500, uh, our first qualifying attempt, the car stepped out, I, I got loose, spun out, hit the wall, and that's pretty much the worst time of, of the whole month to have it happen, short of in the, in the race itself, and it was a huge uh, panic by everybody at Oshman Peterson Motorsports to get the backup car ready, huge credit to them for getting it done, everybody at Honda as well for, for chipping in. We got back out there Saturday, wasn't quite enough to get in the show Saturday, had to go to the last chance shootout on Sunday morning, which because of weather got delayed to Sunday evening, but uh, you know, ultimately um, through all the ups and downs, all the crazy emotion, all the stress, all the panic, whatever you, know, you want to throw at it uh, throughout the weekend, the guys did what they had to do, we got it done on track and, and we got our, our starting spot in the race. Not where we want to start, ideally, 32nd, but uh, we're in the show and, and I think in a 500 mile race you can win it from anywhere. Absolutely, but did you get like, I mean, you don't, you look great, like not a scratch, but did you have flashbacks of what happened before? No, I mean, luckily I don't remember what happened before, so uh, so I, there was none of that. Um, you know, I, I hit my knee a little bit, but other than that, I was fine, and I think it just speaks volumes to the safety that we see in IndyCar these days, and the safety of the racetracks, and the cars themselves, uh, the AMR safety team, everybody was great as always. Uh, I mean, two and a half hours later, I was back on track in a backup car, so it just speaks volumes to 
the fact that we can hit a wall like that and still be good to get back in. You know, this is one of the most iconic tracks. Um, well, I mean, what are your thoughts on this? What do you think you have to do to win? And who are some of the guys you got to look over your shoulder? That list is too long to name. I mean, it's, so, it's such a competitive field right now. And I mean, if you look at the qualifying times, it was so, so close. And uh, there are a lot of good drivers, a lot of good teams, a lot of good cars. Ultimately, I think we just have to execute absolutely perfectly on our side and see where the chips fall. You know, there are so many things in a 500 mile race that you don't control. You can't control other people. You can't control mechanical things. You can't control yellow flags, things like that. Uh, but if we hit everything that we have control over, if we drive well, we make good decisions on track in pit lane, if the crew does a good job and stops, and if we don't have bad luck, you know, if we just if we execute everything we have control over, then I think we can be proud of whatever it is we get out of it at the end of the day. No, I didn't have a chance to check. What's the weather looking like? Do we know? It's supposed to be warm, but there's a chance of rain too. So it could be a bit of a disrupted 500 this year. I was we never gonna say, know. Does that make a difference for you? It could. From where we're starting, it certainly could. You know, there might be a, a strategy play involved if we're past halfway, because that those are the rules. If the if the rain comes after halfway, they can officially call the race, and so. You know, I think the last time we saw it was 2007. Uh, Dario Franchitti actually won his first 500 under those conditions. There was still, you know, 50, 60 laps to go, but the rain showed up and it wasn't going anywhere, so they called the race. Uh, if that situation materializes, I think you're going to be seeing a lot of guys trying to be creative with strategy and fuel to see if you can be out front when the rain hits. I know, you, you know you're dealing with that right now, but are you thinking about uh, the Honda Toronto Indy, or Indy Toronto, I should say? Are you thinking about that now also? Always. I mean, I, uh, I love obviously coming home and racing at the Honda Indy in Toronto, and it's been it's the, it's the race that made me fall in love with IndyCar racing as a kid. You know, I grew up coming to this this race, and it's so special to be able to come here into my backyard essentially, and and put on a show for all the Canadian fans who've been so supportive of me my entire career. And you know, we've gotten a, a podium two of the last three years, uh, but we still need that top step. You know, we, but we're working hard. I promise you that, and uh, very excited to get back here in July. Okay, well, look, we're looking forward to seeing what happens to you at 500. Looking forward to you coming back here, Toronto, for the uh, Indy. We're just looking forward to seeing you racing, man. Congratulations on your success. Thank you very much.